what's up guys this is DJ I'll probably be posting this video everywhere as much as I can all right this one there's a lot there's a lot of stuff to go over uh, please don't leave please please don't leave this stuff is really important uh, if you've seen me on the Facebook the Facebook videos live on Facebook or, or posted the last one I think I did was on spiritual warfare well I actually get more uh, into it on this video there's a lot of stuff I've been doing this these notes and praying since Saturday I'm not gonna I don't want to be a hypocrite about this all right I had to have this applied to me before I can before I can teach someone else uh, I had a lot of spiritual attacks throughout the past weeks it's not easy when you try doing it on your own and yeah that's the thing about it some people might uh, look up to me or Mariah or uh, our church but it's it's not an easy thing and the only reason why is because you constantly have the flesh versus the spirit in this so yeah it's it's been pretty challenging, but one thing that is good uh, is that I'm not doing it alone, and I, I'm not just talking about Mariah, or I'm not just talking about our families, I'm talking about Jesus, you know, no no power, no, no deity or false god, false idol, no religion, or no person, no demon, no devil is going to stop our love for God. And in the past, I probably made it more about Christianity than I did about Jesus. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And that's why I really feel like it's important. And why I know, not feel, I know it's important to talk about spiritual warfare, especially at a young age. Now, this is going to apply to everyone, not just people around my age. But I need to make some points first before I get into it. First off, a lot of people are talking about this. If you know Benny Hinn... Uh, you should know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then look him up. Benny Hinn, uh, prosperity teacher, or used to be. I see a lot of Christians bashing him because uh, based off of the videos that he's been, he put out himself or that he announced himself, Benny Hinn has repented from the prosperity gospel. By now, everyone, I think a lot of people should know. Like one of those televangelists that say, give $1,000, give... Uh, a uh, hundred dollars give more than a thousand dollars and you'll get blessed it's always just reaping and harvesting they always twist around the scriptures well benny hen repented from it uh you know in front of his in front of his uh congregation or he even put it on video to show but what does it have to do with spiritual warfare well there's a lot of things it has to do with it one thing is the enemy likes to deceive us to just constantly bashing and bashing and bashing. And I'm also going to bring up Kanye too. A lot of people say, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying to follow Kanye West. I'm not saying to, to, uh, to listen to his music. No, that's what I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, look at these people as an, as examples. There's Benny Hinn, prosperity gospel, repenting from it. Now it's not our jobs to judge his, his heart. There's a difference. Certain actions, yes, where we have to rebuke, where we have to correct, but his heart, how do we really know where his heart is at? That's not our job. Our job is to to, to be there and to correct our brothers and our sisters. Kanye West. Yeah, in the past, he's put a lot of stuff. Some people might say he's Illuminati. Some people might say this and this and this. Of Kanye West, you know, his music, rap, all this. Most people might not, some people might not even know him. A lot of people do, but you see a, a, a change or you see, uh, out of nowhere, he's either, you know, trying to be a part of the church and Hey, I'm not saying to listen to his music. All right. I, I don't even like his music anymore. And I haven't listened to his music since I was a kid, but no, no, I'm, I'm saying before we even talk about other people, let's, you know, pray for them. Let's pray for them. Let's be willing to correct certain people. There might be a Benny Hinn in your household, you know, who's had a life of all this and this, greedy and all this. But 
does that mean God wants them to stay that way? No. I mean, you can't say anything unless you were perfect your whole life. And let's face it, nobody's been perfect their whole life. We've all been lustful, sinful. We've lied. We've murdered in our heart by hating our brothers or our sisters. There's been a lot of stuff. But I want to advise you, and I want to challenge each and every one of you, adults, people my age, elders, whoever's watching this, hearing the sound of my voice, to pray for those who persecute others, to pray for those who persecute us. And I'm not saying to not to defend yourselves, no. I'm saying to pray for them, pray for their souls and respond with user words. And this is where I'm getting into spiritual battle because the enemy wants us turning against each other instead of coming together and going against the enemy and this demonic activity. So I, I want you guys to see this real quick. I wanted to make that point real quick. Because the enemy likes to twist everything around and make us hate each other. Oh, well, this person has this, so obviously he's, you know, he's on his way to hell. Or he's going to hell for sure. I know he is, or all this and this. And you know, you know what? There are people on their way to hell. But our job is to is to lead them to Christ and to, to water that seed. Not to just plant it. Not to just stop at planting the seed. We got to water the seed. That's the thing. You think you can just talk about Jesus once and that's it and you, you just get away from it? No, you have no excuse. That's selfish. How is that loving to your brother and sister if you want them, if you want to see them walk into heaven with you? It's not off of, and I, I'm not saying to, you know, I'm not saying we're saved by works. We're saved by grace. But how does faith come? Romans ten seventeen says faith comes by hearing. How will they hear without a preacher? The Apostle Paul says this in Romans 10. Let's just get into spiritual warfare. So by now... A lot of people can't even recognize the difference between spiritual warfare and and uh, being tested by God, by trials, tribulations, you know, warfare. What's the difference? Well, we know this for sure. I have all my notes written down. I've been going over this for the past, I think like the past three or four days. I had it here. Oh, this one. So in James, James chapter 1, verses 12 and 13 says, Blessed is a man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised them that love him. And listen carefully to verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted. And he cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So God doesn't tempt us. God doesn't try to get us to sin to test us. No, God's tests aren't going to be seducing. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be evil. It's not going to be wicked. It's not going to be tormenting. Anything that's seducing evil, wicked, tormenting, or seducing, that's from the enemy. That's from that's demonic. That's not how God tests you. There are certain things God, you know, will, will test you with uh, to be broken down, maybe fine, maybe all this other stuff. But God will never put you in a position. Or he wants you to sin. God's not going to seduce you to sin. He's not going to send anyone to seduce you to sin. That's where we have to engage in warfare. And that, that's why this entire thing, life itself, is a spiritual battle. And it's a spiritual battle because we can't, we can't physically fight them back. So we have to fight it spirit with spirit. And we have to fight it not with our own selves. We can't be fighting against flesh, but with the word of God. With prayer, with fasting with the church together. This is why it's important to go to go to church, to have a church, a congregation to meet up with. So I, I've been writing down stuff. I That way I wouldn't forget. So testing is meant to prove if you're ready or if you're not ready for the next level. You're over here praying for something and, you're, and you think you're ready, but yet be careful what you pray for because you think God's just going to give it to you like that? No, he's going to test you. Are you going to be able to endure to, to that time? Are you going to be able to engage in this, in this certain situation? Are you going to be able to trust in God even though you don't know what's going to happen? So how are you supposed to expect that prayer to be answered if, if it's not going to give him glory or if it's, if it's not going to show that if you're ready? And this is another thing. This is why a lot of people, they get knocked out in these spiritual battles because most, most people, most people don't understand what they carry. 
and I'll say this for even lukewarm Christians, you guys don't understand what you carry. You don't understand the power, the anointing that you can have or that you should have, not can, you should have it. And the power of life and death is in your tongue. This is why we have to be careful how we say certain things with words or how we do certain things. And it's very, it's very dangerous for a man that is confused and doesn't even recognize who he is or his identity. When you're always asking yourself, who am I? Why am I doing this? What's my purpose in life? And yet you call yourself a Christian? I'm not bashing you. I'm trying to, I'm encouraging you, man. However, I don't know who's hearing me, uh, but I, I really feel the Holy Spirit working right now and from these past days because I've had to apply this to my life before I can apply it and before I can try to show anyone else and share this message. Because do you know how hard it is to, to pray? Do you know how hard it is to cry out to God to repent when you have something holding you back from condemnation? Now, there's a difference. There, there's a whole difference. It's very dangerous for a guy who doesn't, or a woman, anyone, any person on this earth that doesn't know who they are, and yet they want to call themselves a Christian or say they pray to God, but yet they're not even getting anything back. You guys think like God's like a genie. He's not a genie. He's a person. And he's loving, he's caring, he's kind. And his love is all there. 1 Corinthians 13. But... I also want you to realize it's not just a person that's confused. You can even have your identity. So say the enemy, he he attacks the people that are confused. What about the people who know who they are? You think he's, you think he's going to be done with you? No. He's going to instill and put in fear and condemnation in you. For a Christian that gave into sin, you know, that, that time or that's in a habit of sin. And they're probably not even trying to be lukewarm. They're actually trying to be... You know, good Christians, they're actually trying to follow Christ, they actually love Christ, but yet, if they give in and or they do all these other things, the enemy is going to use condemnation against you. In Christ, there should be no condemnation. And that's why I, I say it's important to, to have the spiritual battle. So this is for the people that are confused, if you don't know your identity. James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally, meaning God is just going to give you that wisdom freely, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. See, it shows right there, James one chap, James chapter one verses five, verses five through eight already shows God will give you faith, He'll give you hope, He'll give you wisdom freely, so you will know the truth. But verse six says, "But let him ask in faith." You got to have faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7 says, For let not the man think that the Lord, that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And right here, verses 8 of James chapter 1. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You got to know who you are in Christ. You can't be two feet in, two feet out. You got to be all the way in. And hey, I'm not going to say that I've always been all the way in. All right? I've been a hypocrite. I've been lukewarm. And I've been like that in the past. But that doesn't mean we stay in that in that same position. That's why I'm I'm sharing this message. I'm gonna get I, every time. You know what I've been noticing on my YouTube videos? Every time I put a video, like first in the beginning, nothing with Jesus. I never got any dislikes. I hardly even have any people that that are subscribed to this channel. And yet every now I've been starting to talk more about Jesus. And even the times where I'm not even consistent, I can wait in like a month or two. And as soon as I say something, anything about Jesus, I get a dislike. That should say something right there, how much they hate the truth and how much people are going to bash you no matter who they are. They can even be Christians disliking it because it's not politically correct. Look, understand this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 5 says, For this cause where I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means a tempter have tempted you and our labor in vain. Who is the tempter? The tempter we know is Satan himself or anything demonic. Hear those last words. The tempter have tempted you and our labor in vain. Tempting you and our labor in vain. The tempter. What does it mean by our labor? Yeah, sometimes we can do things in vain. I believe it's in Matthew 12 verses 34 through 37 where Jesus says that... His, Jesus talks about the Pharisees, how his, his, uh, how their words, they worship him or they worship God with, 
with, uh, you know, with these hypocrites, these religious people, they, they, we, they worship with their mouths, but yet their hearts are far from him. Yeah, how about that? Just because you're saying just sweet words that God, you know, you think he would enjoy, but yet your hearts are far, far from him. It's the same people in modern days where you tell, you try, you try to, you talk to them about it. You don't even try to call them out. You talk to them about it by rebuking. You're not bashing them. You're correcting them because you want them to do the right thing. It's God's commandment. But yet the same people that you can, that you can call out. I've done this where I've at least explained to someone who tries to bash me for, I don't even do anything. I don't even say anything to them, but they have, they want to be correct even when they know they're living wrong. And I'm not saying I know everything, but I've given them scripture. And they and I, I can just say one thing like drinking, and they justify it. They try to justify their sin. They'll say, well, I haven't drank in, uh, since yesterday, or I haven't drank since this. Why do you have to say, I haven't drank since this? When, and like, you plan to do it again? Do you plan to smoke again? Do you plan to watch pornography again? It's a habitual sin. And if that habitual sin, you say, if you want to justify it, then just tell me straight out, you're not going to give it up? You see, repentance isn't with words. It's from your heart. You move away from it. And I say this and yeah, I, I might seem a little bit upset, you know, but I'm not upset. I'm, I'm fired up. I'm fired up because this, isn't, this hasn't only affected uh, other people around here. This has affected people in the world. And, and uh, of course, I'm from Texas. I'm not sure if it's true or not. It's just something I've heard. I need to look it up. I'm going to be honest because I've heard it's in Texas with the most suicidal rates in the United States. I'm not sure about that yet. But even then, I mean, if why are we even having statistics of suicidal rates in the first place? You got people killing themselves and killing themselves. And you know what? That what is one huge lie of the enemy of Satan himself saying that killing yourself is just going to lead to a better life? No, it's going to lead to hell. I'm sorry. But suicide is something that shows you have no trust in God. You've never been in his ways. And that show it's so sin is so powerful if, if you just give into it. That's how powerful it can be if you don't have Christ, if you're not following in its ways. It's so seducing. But what causes, what inflicts that? And this is why it's it's a spiritual battle. But I want you to see this first. Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 10. I'm just going to skim through it. Brethren, if a man overtaken in fault, uh, which are in the spirit, if a man be overtaken in a fault, meaning if a man gives in to sin or anything, which are and are spiritual, same faith as you, such as one in the spirit of meekness, considering this of lest thou also be tempted. I mean, we've all been tempted. We've all been tempted. But yet, you see someone struggling, you don't just let them stay in that sin. No, you go out of your way and you go help that person, especially if they're in the same household as you. I'm going to skip all the way to, to the last verse in chapter 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So read it for yourself. You got to read it for yourself because I got to move on. And But I, I'm going to leave you with this before I move on. Before I move on to the next one. Galatians chapter 6. I'm still in the same one. I'm going to go towards the middle. All right. Verses 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that, he sh that shall he also reap. You keep on putting in that sin, you're going to reap that sin. And no, this ain't karma. We don't, we're Christians, man. We don't talk about karma. Karma is so dumb. You know why karma is so stupid? First of all, the karma comes from the religion of Hinduism. And, and karma is you get what you deserve. You get what you deserve or, or I want you to have that. No. That, it's Christian. No, you reap what you sow, meaning it's not, it's not God's will for you to have that. But if you keep on reaping it, you're going to sow it. All right. And I'm going to move on. The, verses 8 in Galatians 6. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Meaning you keep on sowing to that sin, it's going to be, it's going to be even more corrupt and it's, it's going to be habitual sin. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You sow to the Spirit of God. You're going to reap it back. And I'm not talking about money. This ain't no prosperity preaching. No, this ain't a feel-good message. And now, I, I love it when God makes us all feel good. But it's not always going to be like that. Sometimes you got to have that, you got to feel that strength, not good. You got to feel that strength to get through the end. That's why it's enduring to the end. It's, it's always enduring to the end. From, like I said earlier, James chapter one, verses 12, 
It says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You're not enduring it just in that moment. You're enduring it all the rest of your life. This is where I've seen it. And we have people doing all these things. We have people committing suicide. I've, I wrote this down. I don't want to forget this. The master of selfishness is to take your own life. I'll say it again. The master of selfishness is to take your own life. I'm sorry, but it was never our lives to even take when we didn't even give each other. We didn't give this life to ourselves. It's sacred. Now, I also wrote this down. When demons come to you, it isn't time to pray. It isn't time to praise and worship. Why do I say it's not it's not the time to pray and worship or you know to to call to call out to God during the attack? What do we always say? I know a lot of you I've heard stories, some people might say this, I've heard stories of of people who uh, have had, uh, what's that, sleep paralysis? Or, you know, you're in bed, you feel like someone's holding you down. You you, you guys should know what I mean. I've, I don't think I've ever had this. My, I've had PTSD, I've had demonic nightmares, but I've never had this. But it, it still relates to it. I mean, you guys should know. You have someone standing on your chest and choking you, trying to, you know, keep you from breathing. What do you say? You say, Jesus. Or, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. So why isn't it the time to pray? Because God gave you the authority already. He gave it to you. The power of life and death is in your tongue, your mouth. You speak it. Your power is right here. Open your mouth and use the power that God gave you. And a lot of people will say God will fight our battles for us. Now, in some parts, that might be true. But also understand that we can't just sit around and expect God like a genie to do everything for us. Alright? Because it's... How, think of it like this. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm not going to read it because you should know it by now. If This is spiritual warfare. Read it. This is an important one. I'm just going to go through it all, but I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to state them. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Write this down, take some notes. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. It's the whole armor of God, and that is the righteousness of Christ, the helmet of salvation, the gospel of peace, the belts of truth, the, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. That's the word of God. These are the scriptures, the word. And why is the word so powerful? Because Jesus was the living word of God. He's an expression of God. It's like in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was, was uh, with God and the word was God. It's like that, that expression as God speaks. Jesus is the living word in the flesh. He's God in the flesh. You know, walking, that walked among men and he's coming back. And, and the time is so close it's so, so close to Jesus coming back. And I've seen it, and I, I know I've probably been chilled throughout the... I'm sorry, like, I'm excited. I've been chilled throughout all these videos, and I've been chilled throughout this, but I, I really feel the power of the Holy Spirit moving in not just this room, not just not just in my life, in all lives. I see it happening around the world, and I even see it. That's where you get you rejoice after that. For someone like Benny Hinn or Kanye, yeah, there's still maybe... or Kanye, he's still probably part of the world, but you can see he, he's at least... You can see like an efforts are trying to get out of it. Let's lead them to it. Yeah, we can. He needs guidance. At least correct them. Let's correct them. Benny Hinn. Hey, that's great, man. Instead of just opening up my mouth to say it, I don't think he really repented. How do you know? How do you really know Benny Hinn's heart? To see if he really repented. Yeah, maybe he was a, a prosperity teacher, or whatever. And you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna compromise this. I left a church, and this might offend the people that are watching this from that church. I'm not going to call any names, all right? I might offend you. But I left a church that, that taught prosperity teaching. I didn't go to, to Mariah's church because of her. I didn't go to because of her family, because of the pastor or whatever. But I, I left the church and I didn't feel like I was meant to be there. I'm not calling them out. I'm not trying to speak bad about them. But I, you know, I did have some questions about Benny Hinn and, and Kenneth Copeland and all of them about prosperity teaching and how dangerous it can be. And yeah, of course, they, we had some disputes and disagreements. But, you know, now look what happened now. I'm not trying to say, oh, yeah, I was right. 
I didn't I didn't want to be right about that. All right, we we don't have time to be dealing with with to be arguing about this stuff. But to even show that someone like Benny Hinn could admit there are some attacks on Christians when it comes to deceiving them with prosperity teachings and to getting away from the full gospel that doesn't even talk about repentance and from sin and moving away from and following in Christ. Yeah, it all shows it. I need you to look at this. Please don't, don't take, don't log off this video or don't, don't, you know, close the video, don't X or whatever. You need to listen. This is an important one right here. Weapons. We know it's the armor of God. And this is better yet. I got to I got to show you like this. What makes us think we're going to get into heaven or be with God off of our works? We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. Remember, remember in Ezekiel 28, Satan used to be the closest to God. He was the closest at the throne. Satan was at, when he was known as Lucifer, he was at the throne next, right next to God. And look how he fell. Now, if we keep on giving into that desire, thinking we're so entitled with God, I'm not saying, I'm not saying to walk in condemnation. No, I'm saying for the Christians who compromise their faith, and I've done this before, so yeah, I've been a hypocrite and I've had to repent from that before in the past. So yeah, I know how it feels. All right, I'm, I'm relating with you. I'm not trying to say I'm better than you. Of course, I've never been perfect. Nobody has. But it's very important, especially in these last days. Spiritual warfare is powerful, man. This is something our pastor went over. We're doing a king on Elijah's double portion, but... I've seen it, it aligns up with what God's been showing all of us together. Second Kings verses Second Kings chapter four verses twenty-one. You need to go read the story of Elisha with an S H A. Where after uh Elisha went to a widow, I'm not gonna get too much into the story, but where the widow's uh daughter or I'm sorry, her son died. Her son died and after uh kids are a blessing, man. Kids are a blessing. But after the son died where the the mother she took she took she tried you know she said that she needed a man of god to run to but when elijah came to that widow she had made him a place she made him a, a bed a room to sleep in as he was traveling and look at this one verses 21 in second kings chapter 4 and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of god and shut the door upon him and went out Meaning she laid the dead child on the bed of God. I'll leave you with that for now. I'm not going to go too much into it. Because you, you want to know why she laid him on the bed of God? Think of it like this. Parents. I'm, now I'm speaking to the elders and the parents. Or the elders that can relate with me. My grandpa's a pastor. He tried laying my dad on the foundation. Yes, I'm not calling out my dad. I'm saying my dad has made some mistakes. And you know what? God is restoring us together. All right. To get to the point where now, you know, my I can still learn some things from my dad. I'm not trying to be... Say, I know more than him. Now, scripture-wise, I've been teaching my dad things. We're all learning from each other, all right? He's still my dad. Whether I know more scriptures than him or not, I still respect him, and I still look up to my dad, even though I might have all this. But to see that that you're, as parents, I can't say I'm a parent yet. All right, I, I've been in the position uh, with, from, if you see, just go back to my testimony, you'll see it. But where you want to lay your, your child on, on something that has a foundation like a rock where Jesus said like it's like uh, a man who lays his foundation like it's like a wise man who builds his house on a rock nothing's gonna shake that 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 rock it's a foundation and it's like putting that putting your son your daughter on the foundation of God and you see they try looking for a man of God you don't know what to do if you're lukewarm you don't know what to do who are you gonna go to you're gonna go to a man of God see this second Kings chapter 4 the same chapter, but this time it's verses 22. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, meaning the donkey, that I may run to the man of God and come up again. That I may run to the man of God and come up again. Yeah. Can you imagine modern times? People who aren't even as humble or as, as God-seeking as this woman or... Uh, aren't as modest as this woman or as respectful. 
people who don't know what to do when their child is is in trouble and and nothing's been working for them so they have to go seek a man of God now that's the thing with Christians once you become that man of God you were seeking you were seeking for now people can come to you and not because you're 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 uh, you have you know it's not because it's to glorify you're glorifying God you're a vessel that's being used by him it's a beautiful thing and this is what does this have to do with spiritual warfare because it's kind of like this my dad was a street fighter my uncle was a cop and taught me how to fight my brother my older brother taught me how to fight we all taught each other to fight and i'm not saying fighting is you're not never it's never a good idea to fight with with the with another human being because we're all brothers we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in christ we're supposed to fight against uh you know, persons without bodies, demonic attacks. But, you know, it's kind of like, you're a father, you're, you want your, your son, your daughter to know how to defend themselves. You don't want them to get attacked. You, at least you need them to defend themselves. So it should be like this. You have to teach them how to defend themselves in spiritual warfare. Don't teach them how to be a good person. That's God's job. All right. How, how are you going to teach him how to be a good person without the word of God? Now, what, in what way are you going to try to teach him how to be a good person? By Christ righteousness or self-righteousness? There's a difference. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Scripture is supporting scripture right here. I'm not even, this isn't even my opinion. This is all scripture right here. I'll use this analogy. I need, I'm, I'll leave you all off with this analogy. Whoever's saying this, I, I really feel on fire right now. I'm excited. And uh, yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired, but my flesh is tired. All right, now, uh, honestly, right now, I'm probably going to cry out after this. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I'm going to cry out after this because I, I really feel like I like I, I need to spend more time with God. And, and be, because it's been a hard spiritual battle, but I'm not going to cry about it. Hey, if I'm rising out of this, all of you got to rise out of it too. Rise out of whatever it is that's holding you back. Either if it's if it's fear, if it's condemnation, if it's from giving in. We'll pray for you. Man, you want to talk to me? I won't even say anything to anyone. We'll pray together. That's a Christian's job, man, to be there for you. Because we're not Christians. We're not just Christians. We're, we're servants of, of Christ. And we're servants to others. We're submitting to one another. But here, boxing. Now, I, I love boxing. I, I love it. I love practicing it. You know, I, I get, I look, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad for myself. And I'm not trying to make fun of anyone, but most people here in the Valley in South Texas, like South, South Texas, uh, my age, I'm 20 years old. In a few weeks, I'm going to be 21. I'll, I'll be 21 in a few weeks. But I, I see a lot of people, around, you know, they, they look a little bit, I'm not saying uh, they're a little bit hefty. <laughs> They're a little bit hefty because uh, from drinking a lot of alcohol, I haven't drank since like a year. I'm not, I'm not boasting. I'm just, you know, I, I think I take care of myself a little bit and it's a bright, it's a good thing for Mariah in the future. You know, she actually has, gets to see a, a future fiance or future husband. And when later on, when, you know, things take off when, with abs, I would hope so. You know, I, I like to take care of myself because this is a vessel of the Holy Spirit. But boxing. Now, there's a trainer. There's a trainer in boxing. There's a fighter. Christians, we're all fighters. We fight. But we got to fight the right people. And the right people are the right things. Not people, but things. We're fighting demonic spirits. We're not fighting each other. We're coming together. So there's a trainer. Who's our trainer? The Holy Spirit. You think God doesn't know to fight? He does. The Holy Spirit is our is our guide. We got to listen to him. And there's assistance. It's a team. There's assistance to that trainer. Now the trainer's in charge, but there's assistance that that have to teach you according to how the trainer says. And it's kind of like this. If I'm throwing a punch and my trainer corrects me in boxing, if my trainer's correcting me, but the assistant is teaching something, no, I don't no, don't listen to him. No, you need to punch like you need to punch like this. I'm gonna hurt my hand, and that that trainer. I mean, he's gonna see like who taught who showed him how to punch like that. That's not the way I told you. 
It's like the gospel. You got to teach according to the word of God. You're not just, otherwise, you're not going to know how to hit. You're not going to know how to, how to have movement. Preparation. Scriptures. We got to spend some time praying and reading scriptures. We got to understand. Otherwise, how are we supposed to know? How are we supposed to preach to others? How are we supposed to minister to others and talk to them about Jesus? We don't even know what we're talking about. And also, we got to apply it. You can intellectually know about it, but if you don't apply it, why even know about it? This one. Boxers, they exercise all the time. Every day. What did Jesus say in the when his disciples told him to, to teach him how to pray? Give us a day our daily bread. I'm not saying you need to specifically pray those words. No, you're praying according to those words, but not specifically using those words. But it's a daily bread. It's like the word of God is like, a, like feeding your spirit. Not your flesh, your spirit. It's a daily bread. You got to exercise all the time. Every day. We need God every day. It's a daily exercise. Exercise that righteousness. Go, go practice that righteousness. It's an everyday thing. Strength. You got to renew your strength. A prayer is a powerful thing. But you know what? I'm going to say this. These two actually go together. Strength and that motivation. Where do you get that motivation from? You praising and worshiping. Man, if you're a Christian and you don't know how to praise and worship, you, you got to find yourself a church or something. Dude, or you got to, you just got to let go of everything. Let go of that condemnation. Don't be afraid, man. Who, who cares what everyone else says? We're not there to make friends at church. We're, we're there to praise God. Praise and worship when you're singing to the Lord. When you're, uh, you're singing, you're not doing it for yourself. You're singing to him. Not because it, it I mean, it feels amazing. But that's not where you're there. You're there to praise and worship him because he deserves that praise. He, God deserves it for what he did to you. And church, church is so important. You want to know why? Because you also have others that are suffering with you and, and rejoicing with you. They're giving you motivation for that next fight, that next battle in the spiritual warfare. And strength, I mean, you got to have that strength to get through. And you're not going to be able to avoid it. You got to get, you got to go through. Endurance. Our suffering for Christ, we got to suffer to the end. There's going to be people that hate us, that talk about us, that say bad things about us, that gossip about us. Man, I just had a pastor talk about me. And I was a little bit scared with this teaching. I'm, I'm not trying to gossip about him, but I was, I, I was uh, a little bit. But I, after I found this out, I felt the need to pray. I can feel my flesh wanting to say bad things about him, but... That's not how God wants it. So yeah, there's going to be even brothers and sisters that might talk about you. Now this pastor, I mean, I, I don't agree with a lot of things he says. And, you know, but it's it's something you got to work on. You got to pray for them. Maybe he might see it later on. But I'm not going to reach him if I'm there arguing with him. Footwork, movement, you know, we, I, I love this about boxing, you know, you work in your movement, you got to dodge, you got to slip, you got to bob and weave, because the enemy is throwing punches at you, and what are those punches? You think if I close, you know, for people who have a, a pornography addiction, they're always, you know, alone, They or people that are depressed, and the enemy's throwing punches at you, are you just going to stay there and take the punch to the face? No, you got to slip, you got to move, you, you got to have some movement. God says to flee from, from sin, from lust. Second Timothy says, flee from lust. Flee from sin, any sin. You can't just stand there and, and just take the punch. Mm -mm. You got to move. You got to slip. You got to have composure. Be, be still and trust in God. Know that he is God. Be still and trust in him. There's your composure during that fight. And of course, sometimes you're going to get hit. You can't slip them all. And I'm not saying about, no, don't give them, I'm not saying to give in to sin. No, I'm saying when it comes to suffering, you got to have a strong chin. You got to stay up. And if you get caught, get back up. Not that you intend on getting caught, but if you get caught, get back up and get up again. Get out of that condemnation. But also, you got to have, you got to use that power in your hand. Your jab, jab, jab. And out of nowhere, there's a hook, you know, after you're blocking, you got to, you got to have that power. You got to have some offense. Go cast out some demons. Go save some souls. 
Go win some souls for God. Preach to them. Plant the seed. Go pray over them. Not pray for them. Pray over them. And most of all, listen to your trainer. But I, I need to get back to that power and authority, actually, because you know what the difference is between power and authority? Power is more of a capability. It's an ability to do something. Authority is, is uh, the person that gives orders and forces. The highest authority is Jesus. Our, as there is one God, and that one God is, that God, his name is Jesus, the God above all creation, the God above all these other false gods, all religions. But where you have the power and authority, the name of Jesus, you have the power and authority, you have the Holy Spirit, the power, speak life, rebuke those spirits, walk in honesty with the full righteousness with full honesty, with the armor of God. So now, listen to the trainer. You got to listen to the trainer. Otherwise, if you try to do something on your own in a fight against uh, against your opponent, like the enemy, or you know, things like that, you're in boxing. The trainer says, like, no, you need to you need to start punching with your left, or you need to start jabbing. You need to time them. You know, you know, you have to listen to the strategy of your trainer. And if you're thinking, no, nah, I got this, man, then what happens? You get knocked out, right? Yeah, and then you're knocked out, and then you're wondering, man, I lost that fight. And your trainer's thinking, you should have listened to me. You see, you gotta listen to God, otherwise you're gonna get killed in this battle. And understand, I got two more. Or three more, actually. Rebuild your strength after every round. Just because you got a pretty good amount in one round doesn't mean it's over. You keep on fighting till that round is over. And then you gotta get ready for the next fight. On the next fight, keep that motivation. As it's like after, on a Sunday, you come throughout the week, and I'm not saying no. Don't be only going to church on Sundays. There's a Monday or Wednesday. You go to church, man. You you need it. I need it. But uh, every opponent is different. This is an important one, because there's not one demon you can just knock him out with a jab, but some demons require prayer and fasting. Some of them require prayer and fasting. They need, you know, as Jesus told his disciples when they couldn't cast out the dumb and deaf spirits, uh, Master, why couldn't we cast it out? And Jesus said, this demon requires prayer and fasting. Fasting is so powerful, man. Y'all need to try it. I mean, the first time I fasted, I cried. For my flesh, I was physically crying, but my spirit, I felt weak, but my spirit was strong. I felt more of God's presence just right but instantly i felt a lot of things there was a lot of things you can go with it i felt i had a deeper understanding of Ephesians for the whole chapter there was a lot of it but um you know you keep fighting until they're down until that opponent is down until they're until you've won you don't stop and of course every opponent is different don't underestimate it i'm not saying to be scared i'm just saying don't underestimate it because they're always waiting when you're alone to attack. And this one. I got two more. Be grateful to the trainer. Give thanks, whatever you do. Like in boxing, you're, you're grateful. I mean, hey man, like thanks. I, I couldn't have won this fight without you. Or even before, thank him. Everything you do, you're giving glory to God. Either when you're eating, you pray before you eat. Pray before you do certain things. Pray as you get up in the morning. And I'm not saying casually pray. No. Get, stay. Take your time with God. Don't be just trying to say a quick prayer before you go to sleep and that's it before you go throughout the day. No. Take your time with Him. Most of all, there's no retirement until you're done. Now, I don't know if any of you have seen Mayweather. I think Mayweather were a Christian and it came to move. I think Mayweather would be a pretty... If he wasn't in the world, I think Mayweather would be a pretty cool Christian. And especially with all his dodging, I, I love, you know, I'm not really a fan of him, but I, I love the way he slips, honestly. I, I like the I like his movement. Mayweather, he, he was, he's pretty ahead of the game. You know, the way he, I like the way he moves, the way he slips. His footwork is awesome. His cardio, man, even at, he ain't that young, but he ain't that old either. His, his cardio is pretty cool. I, I love it. Can you imagine how he flees from sin? Just back and forth. But uh, there's no retirement until you're done. And that's, 
Endure to the end. Your life. You're not done yet. You're still breathing. You still have that chance to repent. And always be repentful. Every single time you sin. Not just whenever you feel like it. Don't wait until somebody tells you to repent. Do it yourself, man. Not because you... You... You feel like, uh, like you have to, you have to, but not because you feel like uh, someone is telling you do it because you love God. And I think that's, that's all of it. Wow. I felt fired up today. I'm actually excited for tomorrow. I was actually having my pushups today and everything. But Hey, if anyone wants, you know, you want us to pray over you with you. You want, uh, need some advice. I'll do the best I can. Mariah will do the best I can. I'd say the girls go a little bit more with her. I like to have respect for her. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a tough battle, but I mean, hey, we got to grow up. We got to fight. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, be blessed with it. And I need to go to sleep because I'm tired more now but you know i felt i actually feel fired up right now so i'm gonna go to sleep good tonight and uh god bless whoever's watching this